Hello, today we're going to talk about one of the sequence, exactly the fifth sequence, the Gorenzoku Dosa of Ipame Toritake Kenjutsu. Now, a Toritake has a very special characteristic that it's a very fast movement within a very short space. So, the difficulty of this study is exactly the Mai that we have. Although this is a very short sequence, we cannot uh, forget the dangers that it represents while we have, when we have this short distance and exactly when we have in consideration the, the sharp edge of a sword, of the Japanese sword. So to do this, we are going to fragmentize this small sequence to analyze each part for us to understand. Please. So this sequence starts uh, actually with the normal distance between both practitioners or, or both uh, Kenshi and we're going to start the sequence by taking out the control of his ward to attack a really fast movement on his head so this is called Tsukiru as, and as we are going to attack in the Jodan area we can say that this is a Tsukiru Makogiri or a Tsukiru uh, with a Jodan target. So in this case, I'm going to do a very small movement just by passing my sword to the other side to a very violent impact. So this would give me the space that I need to enter from here, a very short movement from my wrist to use as a lever to attack with the Kisaki in the Jodan area. But in this case, of course, he's going to defend himself. So, when I pass my sword to the other side, he will actually start doing also his own movement to defend himself by bringing the sword to a higher defense technique. And stepping backwards, what we call the Shirizoku, to give him space enough to be safe in this, in this attack that we just did. So, again. To our legs to do this very fast movement, we need to apply uh, two techniques within the time of one attack. So I won't move my legs while I'm doing this small circle to impact on his sword. Actually, I'm going to bring my thorax forward to give me the space that I need, avoiding stepping forward. Um, while I'm waiting for him to lose the control of the sword. So the thorax go forward while I do the circle and in back. And now that I have this vulnerability, I can step forward to the attack. Okay? From here. So now he's got his, his body. In a very defensive position, we are here in a neutral situation. He's defending himself. I have my sword up. So he's going to attack me now because as he has his sword under mine, he easily can unbalance or give, take away my sword because in this case, it's going to flicker to the side and I have a vulnerability here. Or in other case, just by the strategical study, he can also bring his blade to the middle part of my blade and use the same strategy that I've used to imbalance and make me lose the control of the sword. So anyway, it doesn't matter what he does, because when he attacks, I'm going to knee down, because I'm going to change the level of the target. And while I knee down, I have now his whole body as a target. In this case of this sequence, we are going to attack the back part of his knee because here we have some very important uh, structures as the tendons and it's the area that we find with no protection from the armor. So in case that he were using a, a Japanese armor, I need to attack on the areas that are unprotected. So in this case, the blade goes with a saute means that I'm going to support 
the cut by putting my palm on the mune, the back part of his knee. So again. So that's a very short sequence. Although, as you can see, we need to study all the details to make it possible and efficient. Thank you. <laughs>